I was expecting my weekend to start off like this. No lie. You know what I'm saying? I was expecting to, you know, go out, do my thing, one, two step, get it cracking. You know what I mean? I was thinking my weekend is about to be crazy. I'm about to come back with the craziest of stories. Tariq St. Patrick got some cutty. Guess who else got some cutty? That nigga Mo did. But unfortunately, I ain't getting no cutty. I wanted to be laid out on. Well, I wouldn't have laid out on my floor. I would have gotten to bed because he at least got carpet. I ain't had no carpet. I had towel. So I thought. I thought my weekend was going to be like this. I'm about to go over to Greece. I'm about to get it cracking. I'm about to be in there taking shots. Mm -mm. Totally different. Tariq in here, he talking to Anya, getting shots in. Everything is good. We know they turning up. They doing what they do. You know what I mean? I'm in here. I'm buying drinks. They already busted me over the head talking about 45 for a double. I'm like, golly, geez, Louise. But I said, fuck it. We here now. I'm talking to a little, you know what I'm saying, a little thing. I'm pulling a Tariq St. Patrick. We getting drinks. Everything's going good. But you know, I'm an older gentleman. I end up going upstairs to the bathroom. Some tall dudes come in. They about 6'5 on average. It's probably like 10 of them. I'm like, damn, these niggas tall as hell. But I'm looking, I'm like, oh, man, these niggas ain't going to get on nothing. I should be good to go with the one I'm talking to. I go to the bathroom, come back downstairs. All the girls that I was talking to, they ain't at the bar no more. They ain't walking around no more. They all in the sections. I'm like, what the fuck? I look over, see Tariq St. Patrick with Anya. I'm like, damn, even this little nigga got one. So Tariq in the club with Anya doing his thing while I'm over here drinking, drinking by myself because shit, everybody gone. I wouldn't ask this one girl, like, hey, let me get your Instagram. This is one I was talking to earlier. She in the section now. She looked at me and said, hell no. She didn't say hell no. She said no. And then she tried to dap me up. Man, I did an about face and got the fuck up out of there and went to the bar. Tariq, he took Anya back to the room. I'm in here like, oh, man, this little nigga Tariq won. I done lost my step. You know what I mean? But I'm solo, so it's like it is what it is. At this point, they played Kendrick Lamar, not like us. And I was like, damn, they right. I'm not like them, man. They got all the girls. I'm over here by myself. I'm having a full-blown conversation with the bartender. Hey, bartender, let me get another double. Y'all take card? Because I, I only went out there with like 250, and I was like, man, that's five drinks. I'm running through that. I was like, let me put some of this shit on the card. I'm having a conversation with the bartender. Tariq upstairs. He going downtown. He going downtown. I said, oh, this nigga Tariq is different. He's supposed to be going to Pound Town. He went to Lick Town. Pound Town. I like, this nigga Tariq is different. This nigga Tariq is different. I said, oh, man, it's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. So this is how they gonna do me? This is how they gonna do me? I couldn't do nothing but be whack, man. I had a drink in my hand. They played that Kendrick Lamar. I'm like, let me just record this. At least, it's a, at least I'm having a good time. You know, Tariq upstairs going downtown. At least I'm in here having a good time. That's how I look down. Like, I'm over here solo. They playing some Kendrick Lamar. They playing Not Like Us. I do got to be a double Henny in the cup. This is like number three. Make the best of it, Mo. But let's get back upstairs to Tariq. Now, Tariq doing this thing. I'm like, damn, man, this nigga different. But that's because Tariq don't drink. Now, see, an experienced drinker would know the finesse, You ain't about to go do all of this. You definitely don't have to do all this. They didn't came to the room with consent. But, you know, you, you, they say you can't have consent if you've been drinking. Now, that only goes for the woman because they say if a man has a drink, it's only consent. You know what I'm saying? She can't consent if she drink. But uh, somehow the law allows a nigga to consent when he drinks. But either way, they go up here and they do their thing. Now, she wakes up and she's getting dressed. Now, Tariq been taking too much drinky drink. He laying on the floor ass naked. So, you know, any kind of moving on that rug, we didn't all been down there. And this is the rug without any cushion up under it. This is the rug without any cushion up under it. So, you know, you know, your ass is dragging across that thing. You can pause. You can do whatever you want with this conversation. But this is real world shit here. You on that motherfucking rug. 
knees is getting scraped up. It's hot as hell on that rug. And you got this comfort on top of you. Well, Anya's getting up. Anya's playing the game how you want the game to be played. You do your thing, and then you dip out. You feel me? Tariq, wake up. Damn, you about to leave? Man, what was I eating last night? It's got this taste in my mouth. She's like, yeah, I'm about to leave. He said, oh, can I get your number or something? She looked him in the eye and said the most sexiest thing I've ever heard. Don't get used to this. This ain't about to be an everyday occurrence. I said, yes. She's about to get the fuck out of here and not bother me. Tariq's like, well, we having a party. But we got to look at Tariq's actual motive here. It's not to just be knocking on you down. It's to actually try to backdoor Noma, get any information he can be able to use this as a chess piece because the game he playing, it ain't checkers. It ain't just straightforward. You got to think this shit out. He's thinking three or four steps ahead. Now, Anya, she's like, let me get on out of here. I got a little bit of that booger sugar I need to attend to. So Tariq on the floor like, all right, damn. Damn. Let me see. When's the next time we see Tariq Tejada? Tariq finally gets up and gets dressed. I hope he washed his ass. Now, one thing we know about Tariq St. Patrick, he's a Tejada, and he was probably in that thing raw diggity. Raw diggity, no doubt. Him and Brayden playing the game, and he's losing. And one thing about a man in his video games, now you know people say, oh, it's childish. I play the video game from time to time, especially on Saturdays. If I ain't doing nothing, I might just turn the game on, get a couple of rounds in or something, you know what I'm saying, some 2K maybe some Call of Duty or something. But hell, I paid $500 for that system. I'm going to play the hell out that motherfucker when I can. Or I just watch YouTube off of it. But he's losing and he's frustrated. One, because he ain't get Anya's information. Two, the worst thing that you can do as a single black man is have a baby on the way and not be for sure if it's yours. And then three, he lost in the game. You're not getting on here just to play. No one gets on here to do friendly competition. We play the game to win, regardless of we playing against a little kid, regardless of we playing against your best friend, your cousin, your girlfriend. If you ain't playing to win, then you losing that life. Everything you should try to succeed in. Me personally, I don't do that because I don't give a fuck. But Braden's like, hey, bro, you broke my fucking controller, man. It's an expensive controller. These controllers are $70. I remember back in the day, a Sega Genesis controller was $25. I got to go drop a 70 piece every time I want a PlayStation 5 controller, and I got three of them. But Tariq is like, look, man, everything's going wrong, B. I got a kid on the way. I got to think about my family. Brayden's like, nigga, fuck them kids, nigga. Ain't nobody tell you to smash Diana. And then Tariq said some of the dumbest shit ever. He said, we only did it one time. How could this happen? It's not like condoms work every time. Tariq, you got that shit ass backwards, nigga. Condoms work like 99.8% of the time. Going raw. I said, Tariq, what? You wasn't paying attention in class, were you? He talking about it's not like condoms work all the time. They do work all the time if they don't break. This nigga talking about we did it one time. How could this even be possible? On Boys in the Hood... Remember when Furious was asking Trey, how does it work? And Trey say, I stick my thing in her, and nine months later, a baby come out. It's really that simple, Tariq. It's really that simple. You do, you do that, then yeah, one time is all it takes. One time, you look like a young, healthy man. Well, you used to be on lean, but yeah, your count should be back up to about the 80 to 120 million. So that's a hundred and twenty million opportunities on that one time, Tariq. Come on, man. You come on, Tariq. You better than numbers than me. Come on, Tariq. You a scholar. 
This nigga talk about, man, how could that be possible? It was only one time. Well, let me tell you how it's possible. <laughs> let me tell you how it's possible. Let me, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to break y'all, I'm going to break this down for y'all. Y'all might understand this also, because if you're here today, that means you beat out a couple million other niggas. If you're here today, that means you were the champion. It only took you one time. You only had one chance to make it. And if you're alive right now listening to me, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you knew, because I want to salute you for being that one timer, that one timer, because that's all you get is one chance and you got to make it. And all of us made it off of that one time. This nigga Tariq talking about how is it possible? How is it possible? Nigga, well, you and Diana, I mean, you and, uh, what's the twins? Raina, you and Raina both made it. You and Raina, were, you y'all both made it. What do you mean, how is that possible? Nigga, y'all were twins on one time. What do you mean, how is that possible, Tariq? Braden's over there like, nigga, you sound stupid. Even, even me and L, me and L be on that. Ooh, we. Me and L be on that sinus cleaner and that motherfucker. We be in there while it out. And let me tell you, <laughs> it's been more than one time and ain't nothing happened over here. This nigga Tariq is different, man. So Braden is like, damn, man, you didn't got a baby on the way. Shit, you living a little bit rougher than me. So the next time we see Tariq, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay. So Tariq leaves from Braden's room after that one time incident. He goes out here to talk to Diana, and they in the hallway having a serious conversation about this baby. I don't know why they're so secretive about it, man. But Tariq is like, man, do you know? You know you tried to have my mama killed. She's like, Tariq, I'm sorry. Why does Diana think saying sorry suffices trying to get someone killed? This is the second time she told Monet in the hotel, hey. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to get you. We, we, we didn't mean to get you shot. She told Tariq, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get your mama killed. God damn, Diana. You can't keep using the same excuse, darling. You just can't talk about I'm sorry. They end up going into the little closet room, the little storage room. And they're trying to figure out what's next, man. And I'm trying to think, have I had any scares in life that I was like Tariq St. Patrick wondering what was next? Nah, man, I was really. Well, I did have one woman come and tell me we need to talk. And I told her to just tell me what it was over the phone. We didn't need to talk in person. But she said we needed to talk in person. So we talked in person and. Uh... I said, well. I don't, I don't want to have to tell you this, but you need to go find out who that baby's father is. <laughs> I'm just going to be direct with you. You need to go find out who that kid's father is. Because <laughs> I know for sure. In the case of five-month-old Jemiah, Julius, you are not. Hey, <laughs> go somewhere with this. <laughs> we, need to talk, we need to talk about what you would tell me on the phone before I allow you to come over here and we talk face-to-face. -face. It could be a setup or something. What we need to talk about? But uh, that was like the only time, like the only real world scare that I had. Everything else, I was all right. But all right, so they trying to figure out what the hell's going on. But it ain't nothing. So what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna go through their story, and then we'll talk about their mistake at the end. So we can kind of, so I can, we could do both and both. So we'll we'll just continue on with Tariq's story. I'm gonna try to, you know, what I'm saying condense it. If I still got some little stories or little, little little jokey jokes, I'll throw up in there. But they show up to Davis, and Davis is already going through it. He's losing clients. 
they cleaning out. People tell me, man, we can't be working here, Davis. Man, we ain't getting no money. But when money show up, Davis don't give a fuck. They show up with his 20%. Or was it 25? I can't even remember. I can't keep track. But Davis's mood changes talking about, oh, shit. <laughs> this is exactly what I needed to see. That 20% coming in handy. I'm trying to think, what could I do with 20% off the top? Man, I could, woof. Sheesh. But once this money starts rolling in, you got to do what you got to do, man. And Davis understands what's at hand here. Tariq and Braden got to continue to move this dope or he ain't going to have no money. He ain't going to have no money. And if you ain't got no money, shit, man. I'm not saying you got to be rich, but if you ain't got like, for Davis, you got to remember, he has a lifestyle that he has to live. You know what I mean? That watch on his arm ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to tick too much longer if he ain't got the funds. So this dope money is the best thing that he can have coming in. Now, as far as Tariq goes, later on that evening, he's at the club. And that's when we run into Noma and, and Kane. They show up to the club, and this is all because Tariq was texting Anya, talking about, hey, we got a party tonight. Anya left a bag of cocaina. Like, how did that even happen? Like, aren't you a little more careful with that type of drugs? Like, back in the day when we used to do, back when it wasn't legal, you know what I'm saying, it was frowned upon, even though no one really cared. Um, you would you would try to hide that from your parents, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not talking about the yokaina, and you know what I'm saying, none of the Colombian, you know what I'm saying, the Colombian magic. We talking about some, you know, back in the day with just a little bit of Reggie, a little bit of Bobby Brown, you know what I mean? You didn't really have the good good back then growing up. I'm talking about early 2000s. You didn't have the. We had Reggie back then. But we used to hide the Reggie from our parents. It wasn't like I was just walking around with the Reggie in my pocket, walking around the kitchen, talking to my mom. And then she said, what are you doing with that? She said, it's not like I did anything. I'm a college girl, mom. I'm having fun. I got it from a party, the underground. So that's how Noman them got this information. Thank you, Demarcus, for that $5. Tariq was under the bed tripping like Smokey in the chicken coop. Yeah, man. They got my dog, Smoke Dog. Smoke Dog, hoo, hoo. he ain't scared of nothing. We need to find out who this woman is back here. <laughs> yeah, we need to find out who that is. But yeah, you wasn't walking around the house with me. You know what I mean? My mom knew, you know what I'm saying? We used to, you know what I'm saying? We used to, you know what I'm saying? Puff the magic dragon, live by the sea. We didn't have a sea. We had a lake. So we used to go up by the lake and do it. But yeah, man, wasn't walking around the house with a bag on me. These kids are different, man. And it wasn't like a bag of weed. It was a bag of Colombian magic. Oh, mom, I didn't even use it. It was just for some fun. So Noma said, I got to show up. I got to be the mother. I got to be the chaperone to this party. Whoever's having these type of parties on campus, they need someone down there, an adult. So they show up and they like, Tariq, are you selling here? He's like, nah, 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 nah. No lie, no lie, no lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All we doing is selling shirts. We got some good music. We got um, the Stansville trio over there. It's a L, Broussandria, and I don't know the nigga name, but yeah, they got they got good music. Actually, no more. What I think you should do, you can invest in them. We get a record label up called like No Lie ENT or something like that. You could be the CEO. I could be like the A&R. We already got us a group. Man, we can set this up. Over. She said, shut up, Tariq. And then you hear Kane talking about, yeah, Tariq, I knew you was up to something. I never could trust you. Let's go talk about this outside. Now, Tariq is like, God damn, they about to whoop a nigga ass. They about to whoop a nigga ass. So they start escorting Tariq about the building. Because Kane and discovered, now nah, look at the bottom of here. Matter of fact, we might get, I might make some no lie. Uh, yeah, we're going to get some uh, shirts made. No lie. I, I'm waiting on them to give me my damn URL back, man. 
they talking about it's gonna take about two months. Like, nigga, just because I lost it, man, give me that motherfucker back. But yeah, we might make some no lies or some all cap no frap. <laughs> so they exposed to Tariq. But as they're leaving, they run into Anya. And now Tariq's plan is coming into play. Oh, Anya, this is your mama? And this is because Anya don't know what the hell her mama got going on. Now, I was trying to piece it together on Friday. Noma's husband was the biggest arms dealer in Europe. Their money came from him. She branched off with Mecca and started doing the drug thing and pushing it in New York. So she married into money and then started her own operation. Kind of like Jay-Z said, we expanded the operation in down in Maryland. But Anya just believes that they've been spending all this money from her dad. And the reason they're in the States is because it was dangerous in Europe. But no one was like, nah, let me get Anya up out of here. So Tariq buys a little bit of time. And Sandra, you're right. The coffee business, they had it in the bottom of the cups and they were just delivering it. So Kane already knew. Look here. Look here. <laughs> Tariq alert. Tariq alert. Tariq lying. Tariq lying. This nigga came, man. He could sniff a hater out even if he had no nose, man. But they get Anya the hell up out of here. Who is this? Idris Elba? When did Idris get on Noma's damn security detail? Damn, wait, no one got a lot of niggas on the crew. You got the nigga holding the door. One, two, three, four, five. I know my got all this security and they ain't stepping on nothing. No one got all this security and won't and want these niggas to run the operation. Kane is the head of security. When she got these niggas on the crew, she got the ball. You know the ball head nigga need to leave security. Then you got Idris Elbow over here who's supposed to be the next James Bond. Then you got these niggas sitting over here with the leathers on. This nigga got a, he got the do-rag on. This dude holding the door and they got Kane as the, 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 the highest nigga in charge. After Obi, it's supposed to be this nigga right here. Why is Kane in charge of anything? Why is he second in line? See, that's why Noma's operation is fucked, man. Look, look at these niggas. Diana at the shop. Effie. It's a wild world, man. It's a wild world. When's the next time we see old Tariki? Oh, yeah, he goes back there, and him and Brayden had that conversation. I'm not you, Tariq, but we find out L knows everything about the operation. This is kind of tiny Tommy fucking giving up all the info, man. Everybody knows all the info because of the, I hate to say it, because of the white boy. Tariq mad at Brayden. Brayden is finally expressing, hey, man, don't talk to her like that because he found out she had sickle cell. And she does the uh, Colombian magic just to get her feet up off the ground, you know what I'm saying, to, to combat her other symptoms. I'm like, I never heard that. Matter of fact, let me put a little Google up real quick. Does consuming cocaine help with sickle cell? Of course, my internet is going. No, it says uh, stay hydrated with sickle cell. Frequent uh, urination. Uh, remember to skip caffeine and alcohol. Drinks with caffeine, soda, coffee, or alcohol are not a good idea. They make the kidneys extreme more water. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that says uh take Colombian magic. No, you know, I gotta Google. It don't say anything. There's nothing that says consume Colombian magic to help with sickle cell. So uh, uh, uh does smoking weed help with sickle cell? Okay, emerging evidence suggests that cannabis help people with sickle health, sickle health, sickle cell disease cope with pain. Oh. I got body, 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 so smoking a little bit does help. Look at that. Everybody put a won't he do it in the chat. A won't he do it because the Lord blessed us with that. Mary Jane. Oh, so it does help with sickle cell. Now, I'm in the federal employee. I can't do none of that. But hopefully Joe Biden and them pass that law. And then, you know, we could drink. Yeah. But yeah, so we just found out, if you didn't know, do not do Columbia magic. Don't do it at all. But it doesn't help if you have sickle cell. So whatever Elle was talking about in that bed, she was coked up. Elle at the party playing with her nose now. Do not trust Elle. So they get into it and Tariq is like, man, fuck it. I got to get out of here, man. I got to get out of here. Yeah, you're pissing me off. Now the moment we all been waiting on. Tariq St. Patrick in this hallucination. Like, give me your honest thoughts on this hallucination. Tariq tripping out all because of L. Well, Think about it. When Brayden went to talk to L and she said, oh, Tariq, he, he should be chill because I put acid in his water. Now we realize that she's definitely not anyone you want to get advice from. And fellas, don't get me wrong. L is attractive, but you don't want to hang around someone that thinks like that. If you're going to do what you're going to do, you got to be in and out. I already told you that room looks like it has a distinctive smell. So you got to get in and get out. You don't want to have too long of a conversation with her because it's going to dumb your brain down. <laughs> it's going to make you feel like, you know what? I went in there and actually got dumber. <laughs> I was chilling with Elle yesterday and she told me that she do Colombian magic to just kick the edge. And on top of that, she just walking around with acid. Hell no. You do what you got to do and get the hell out of there. Now, if this is anybody else, they will be in an uproar. Tariq St. Patrick drugged her, just like what happened when Tariq got fondled on camera. There wasn't no outrage for it. But if Tariq was to put acid in Anya's bottle, we'd be like, what the fuck, Tariq? But now Tariq is wilding out. We got little Tariq Jr. Well, not Tariq Jr. We got Lorenzo. We got Diana coming into the house. Okay. Tariq just know he's going to live in a penthouse. Diana's happy. I ain't gonna lie, Diana shook back though, didn't she? What what the ladies call it? That snap back? Yeah, Diana just shook that baby fat up off her. Mm-hmm. She got her a nice little career now, too. She's an accountant, like Tasha was supposed to be. Tariq over here tripping, telling them niggas, yeah, man, we got that work for the LO. They like Tariq, shut up. He over here in front of a wall full of bricks. This nigga really thought he was Tony Montana for a minute. This nigga had, <laughs> he had a thousand bricks in here. This nigga thought he was on top of the game only for Kane to bow in his damn hallucination. He over at the club thinking he Jane St. Patrick. And this is a flashback. This is reminiscent of the night that Jamie left this earth. The night that Jamie left this earth, y'all. Ah, I knew, I knew this picture would come in handy. I knew this picture would come in handy. He's thinking back 
And he's looking at his younger self, the one that pulled that trigger on this faithful night. He's wondering, what could he have done differently? Was it worth it? Did you hit that like button while you were in here just listening to Mo Talk? Did you hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel? Tariq is you and I wondering why? Why did that happen? Why did that happen? What could we have done to prevent it? Could have maybe in season four, if we could go back in time, put in a petition, keep James around. Hey, James, read your contract. Renegotiate after four seasons. This is a hell of a show. What could we have done? What could we have changed to change the outcome? What could we have done to kept Cooper Sacks around? How? How could we keep these two legendary, legendary characters, Jamie St. Patrick and Cooper Sacks alive? How could we keep them both alive? And Tariq is flipping now. He's losing it. He's losing it. And he's stuck. He's stuck. Like chuck. And Brayden finds his ass up under the bed. Like, nigga, get the fuck from up under there, Tariq. You tripping. You tripping. Then. We get the infamous, like Tariq really is tripping, man. As a I guess going through this and the way I was taught growing up, I look at Tariq and it's really he never had any uh parental guidance. This nigga's just taking my mom always told me. Get the facts first. You know what I mean? I ain't really talked to my dad about much growing up. Me and my dad, we had a mutual understanding. You know what I mean? We talked sports. That nigga whooped my ass when I fuck up in school. He was at work all the time. My dad busted his ass so we could have the, the decent life that we had. You know what I'm saying? We lived a modest lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? My dad put in that work and it paid off. I appreciate him every single day because he made me the man I am. But my mom was the one telling us, Hey, man, be careful with these girls. Just because they tell you they own something, don't trust them. Still wear protection. So I'm looking at Tariq like, dog, at 18, 19, you wilding out and, like, doing all this, and you believe him. Tariq is going around talking about, I got a baby on the way. Man, you can't trust no fucking Tahada. There's no way in my life that I would listen to Diana say that she's, let alone Monet. If Monet told me Diana, I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers... I'm just going to be real with y'all. This is the power universe. If Monet was to tell me with a gun to my head that Diana is pregnant, I'm going to tell y'all the first thought in my mind. These bitches lying. <laughs> Hell no. These motherfuckers is lying. They to pull the gun. Y'all just want me to be the baby daddy. Hell no. That shit's Celine's. Yeah, hell no. Hell no. In my mind, I'm thinking they let me go. I'm getting the fuck about it. They ain't gonna see me again. I ain't that baby daddy. I ain't believing this until we get a test. And even then, I might need to get another test just to make sure. Just to make sure. If you take two pregnancy tests to figure out you pregnant, I need to take two DNA tests to make sure that the baby's mine. And I ain't signing shit until I verify both of those tests. And they better be 99.9%. .9%. Anything below 99.99%, I'm kind of iffy. 998 They say that we all have another person on this earth that look like you. So I'm thinking it's that niggas. 99.99 <laughs> is what... That's it. That's where we draw the line here. But Tariq told me, man, I got a baby, man. I got a baby. I got to be an apex predator. Brayden's like, nigga, what is that? 
the fuck is an Apex Predator, man? We just moving some dope, bro. We just move, nigga. You got a V-neck sweater on with a crew neck on up under it, nigga. You ain't, hey, you ain't no Apex Predator, nigga. You are a church boy. <laughs> you grew up with both parents. Yeah, and your parents had an all right marriage. It wasn't a good marriage, but they had an all right. Your daddy owned a nightclub. Y'all call Braden a silver spoon goon. Tariq grew up in a very good, nice household. Like, come on, man. He's, I got a kid on the way. Yeah. Hey, I'm beyond honest with you, man. Like, you my dog, Tariq. And, you know, we was bumping that Snoop the other day. He said, we don't love these hoes, but, uh, Man, I seen a couple of other niggas come out that dorm room besides Celine, bro. So I don't know, man. You be careful with that one. You know what I mean? You got to tell your homeboy, hey, be careful with that one. Him and Diana show up. Yeah, penthouse, a personal driver, went to private school. Had all the latest video games. Look, Tariq the age. Look at Tariq. Tariq went from looking like a 19-year-old. This boy about 26 now. He done found out that that baby on the way. That nigga stressed the fuck out. Look at this nigga. We ain't seen Tariq smile since that motherfucking baby announcement. Diana talking about she going to keep it. You want to come to see the ultrasound, uh, the ultrasound with me? Hell no. <laughs> I'm not going to that. You better take your mama or Drew or somebody. Look, Tariq is stressed. This nigga, he heard, he was like, and what you gonna do? Well, Tariq, some people said it's a blessing and a fresh start. And then some said it's the worst decision ever. I knew you was gonna let that nigga hit. Tariq, we raised you better than that, Diana. That nigga said, and what you gonna do? You, 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 you gonna keep it? You, 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 you sure about that? Yes, Tariq, I am. What I'm about to say does not reflect me in real life. We in the power universe. Flop around, it's gonna make you go under faster. <laughs> oh. oh man, I'd have took that Fendi offer, I'd have gave that damn jacket to my little sister Yaz. Oh man, Diana, what 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 river is this? What river is this in uh in New York? Was is it the Brooklyn Bridge? What bridge is this? <laughs> what bridge is this? The Hudson? Is this the Hudson River? <laughs> yeah, the Hudson. Okay. Yes, yeah, you would have been in that motherfucking Hudson. Oh man. I would have been shooting like, uh, I'm gonna keep the baby. Well, you and Hudson need to talk about that. Tariq, who it's Hudson? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Hudson? I'm I'm gonna introduce you to that nigga Hudson real quick. Damn. Damn. Hey, I need somebody to go take a picture of this. If you live in New York, take a picture of this tomorrow or sometime this week and send me an actual picture from like this location. That's what I want to do. When all right, for the second half of the season. If anybody else is doing this, then we got to get on their ass. But for the second half of the season, whenever there's like a like a, a landmark or something, I want somebody to go out there and take a picture and like send it to my Instagram. You ain't got to be in the picture. Just take a picture of it and send it to me so we can bring them up on the lives. Like for that, you know what I mean? Because this would be cool to have a picture of this to see what it looked like in real life.
<laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want the Google Map. I want to, I want to get it from you know the people that watch the show. We could, I mean, I'll bring it up on Google Maps. Let me get through Tariq stuff. Yeah, yeah, because we already had an hour, but. This Friday we'll have some free time. I'll I'll, I'll talk more about it. But y'all want to do that? Any like big landmarks or we know like a location that they shot at? Just take like a picture. We gonna you know saying send it in. You know what I mean? So wait, Google Maps you can look at it like live. I ain't never did that before. Google Maps. Man, y'all know I got limited time. I got work in the morning. I took today off. Uh, see my internet's going slow. I don't know why. Go goddamn go Google Maps. What's the place called? Where, what's this at? What's this spot that they standing at right here? The Verizon building. All right, we got the Hudson and the Brooklyn Bridge. But it, what, is, what is this place, this little dock area that they at? I'm going to continue on with the story, but they got to go to the ultrasound. That's the last thing we see. I ain't going to lie. Diana was looking good when she was in here. Red Hook in Brooklyn. All right, bet. Let me look that up. So Diana's in here, and they're looking at the ultrasound, and it's getting real for Tariq now. The baby's just a little bitty, little bitty thing, right? You know what I mean? Ain't nothing too big. But it's got a little, I don't even know if it got a heartbeat at this point. Red hook. But they're in here and she's like, Tariq, what are you going to do? And Tariq's saying, man, you know, I want to be there for the baby. My father always shielded me from this. But I figure if I can get into the dope game and become the biggest drug dealer ever, then... Maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to take care of us both. She's like, Tariq, anyone that's going to be in the game can't be around me and my baby. I don't want my child to have this life. But Tariq is looking at her like, man, you tripping, man. This is the perfect life. You know what I mean? Being a dope dealer, don't get no better than that. What is it, Pier 12? It ain't Pier 12. How they get to the doctor? Oh man, you know, on the good foot. The train run. But Tariq even admits that James tried to shield him from everything. And now he's really trying to be James St. Patrick. He's thinking that he needs to take that route. But trust me, fellas, there's other paths, there's other avenues. If you ever really get down and out and you don't have anywhere to go, man, just join the military. Just put you in four years, put in four years, come back to my live and tell me, hey, Mo. I got two years left. What do I need to do, man? I can get you your disability. I can help you out, man. We can maximize your money. I can get you six years of GI Bill, not the three that they offer you. I can help you out. If you just need something, you just take four years, I can get you right. And then you might fuck around and make a career out of it. But trust me, the military has more to offer than what people think. You know, I ain't joining that. I'm just saying, if you get down and out, you looking at like Tariq's situation, Man, just join the military, man. That dope game, especially in this era, you ain't going to go far with the dope game, man. You, you might make a couple, you know what I'm saying, a couple five digits here and there, but you're going to go to jail. That shit ain't going to last. Or you're going to get shot because everybody got guns. What up, Joey? But that's the end of the episode for Tariq. Diana don't want no drug dealing baby daddy, even though she knows exactly what she was getting into. All right. Tariq's story, man. 